This is my first DLD conference. Um, I work for an invention company, a company called Intellectual Ventures. Hopefully they'll find my deck soon. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about a concept that we call innovation mega projects. Um, innovation mega projects is all about thinking um, how to turn a city into an innovation platform. And how do you turn that platform into something that provides a long-term uh, benefit for that city, its residents, in, in the way they play, they work, uh, they recreate, uh, in the way they live. And ta-da! All right. Thank you. So we came up with this idea um, um, in the course of our normal business. We have been furthering the, the cause, if you will, of an invention e uh, ecosystem for the last 12 years of the company existence. We've done it by bringing together uh, actors, participants, around what we call an invention watering hole. And what this means is we've brought together academics, inventors, investors, small and large business, brought them together in a place that actually talks about invention, creates invention, creates, has the right conditions uh, to create value out of invention. Um, it's a, it's, a, it's a very virtuous watering hole. People keep coming back to it over and over again because the right conditions exist. And those conditions primarily are one, to actually invent, to come up with something new, to come up with something courageous, to disrupt uh, in a positive way, but also to make uh, economic progress for themselves. This concept of an invention watering hole has brought us to what we're calling an innovation watering hole, and we believe that it has applicability toward the future city toward a, a series of mega projects or even a single mega project. So we thought about how to best um, explain this concept. And the best way I can explain it is by showing you a schematic of what some of you may recognize as the Marina Bay Sands project in Singapore. How many of you have been to Singapore and know the project? Great, great. So you must remember the amazing vistas from the observation deck, the, the beautiful hotel, the retail facilities, the restaurants. It's an amazing project. I mean, it really, truly is. And fundamentally, it took the government of Singapore, like it does very, very well, to actually orchestrate the building of this, I think, a shining star of their city. Um, the Marina Bay Sands is about a $6 billion project. It is comprised of a lot of the traditional elements that you would expect in a mega project of this size and stature. Uh, brings together tens of thousands of contractors, developers, investors, the government itself put in a tremendous amount of money um, and uh, a lot of energy to making this happen. And the critical piece here is the government. Because in order for a project of this size to happen, it cannot happen by a single the will of a single um, company or even a group of companies. It needs government to play a central role. And if you think about other mega projects, whether you think of freeway systems, whether you think of bridges, whether you think of mega cities in China that are now being built or other parts of the world, government plays a central role. And in this case, it's not an exception. The only problem with this is when this project was actually created uh, and envisioned, uh, there was a lot of hoopla and there was a lot of excitement. And there still is for the citizens that use, uh, entertain themselves in the building and so on and so forth. But if you think about it, the innovation in that project ended the day it was finished. The building as a building and as a piece of infrastructure is actually obsolete the day it was delivered. And that's the concept that I think empowers us to think, how can we do this differently? What can we do? How can we use invention and the power of invention to reconfigure the outcome, to change things by design? I'll give you a personal example of this. Um, I built a home about five years ago, and I put in a multi-thousand dollar HVAC system, tens of thousands of dollars. And I was really proud of it. At the time, it was the latest and greatest technology. Last summer I was there and I was talking to my HVAC contractor and he informed me that now there are systems that use 50% less energy for about half the cost that I paid just five years ago. We have a trend that we can't deny, which is the one of innovation cycles are getting shorter and they're speeding up. So when you design things for the future, you need to think about what it would look like in 5, 10, 20, 50 years, rather than just simply putting in technology and innovation that exists today. This is our premise. This is what we believe. So the traditional mega projects are actually all built by using mostly existing technology. The innovation mega project is a little bit different. It actually uses the large economic stimulus of a mega project, in this case, $6 billion in the case of the, the Sands project, and actually uses that as an impetus and, a, and an engine for innovation, for true innovation. So what you end up with is not a rip and replace problem at the end. 
It's actually something that's more like a plug and play problem or an opportunity that basically breeds opportunity into the future. An innovation mega project has a lot of the similar elements of a traditional mega project. You'll notice that it has government, it has other actors that play a role, but there's a couple of unique ingredients there that change the recipe, that change the outcome um, that we get really excited about. Let me back up a little bit and tell you again what, we're, what we mean. We mean to change the way a mega city, a mega project, a series of mega projects is actually done today. We believe that it's possible. And we believe that it's possible by using the economic stimulus of a mega project, taking that, all, that, all that capital and investment and energy and actually using it to creating new inventions and new R&D. In fact, what you'll have by doing that is companies that will be competing for that business because they know that government will play an integral role in ensuring that that project will happen just in a traditional project. But what you'll end up with is a very, very different project. You'll end up with a highly differentiated project that doesn't really look and feel like the projects that become obsolete the day they're delivered. It looks very, very differently, and I'll explain a little bit what I mean. You'll notice there are two critical pieces, as they're called the ingredients in an innovation mega project. There's the role of an innovation architect and the role of innovation sockets. An innovation architect is not unlike a current architect. They dream large with a the client, they design, they plan, they bring other actors to the project, other participants, other stakeholders, bring it together, stay involved till the end-to-end -end process. But an innovation architect specifically focuses on the innovation content of the project. They don't think of, of themselves as trying to integrate and design for what currently exists, but they think about the opportunities that present themselves in the construct of this project, and they think about the new things that will be as a result of this effort. Fundamentally, an innovation architect actually thinks about what we call innovation sockets. Innovation sockets are, in many ways, um, things that you use today that you may not think about. Let's take an example of USB. We all know what USB was, you know, how we used it about 10 years ago. We used to use <coughs> USB devices primarily as hard drives to drive data between our PC and an external hard drive. I don't know about you, but today I use my BS USB uh, cable to actually charge my Bluetooth headset. I use it to charge my mobile phone. USB is now found in walls, uh, in homes, um, and you can use it to basically use it as a lamp. It's a tremendous amount of innovation that's happening just around a particular standard called USB. So as you can see, it was designed in a way that actually allowed it to continue to live on as a standard, as an open standard that allowed a lot of participants to come in and innovate, consistently rejuvenating the life cycle of that socket. That's what we aim to do. We aim to provide innovation sockets that continually jump the S-curve of innovation. Another example, Apple's application store. Apple basically wanted to deliver applications on top of its phone, and you could have simply put up a website with some applications and you download them. But in fact, what it did is it actually paid a tremendous amount of attention to the architecture of iOS, to the way that an iPhone and an iPad actually operates. And by doing so, what they've built is an ecosystem, a vibrant ecosystem, that continues to deliver huge economic advantage to Apple and provide huge economic opportunity and excitement to the ecosystem of hundreds of thousands of ISVs. Today, I would argue that a lot of people buy an iPhone for the apps. You remember the ad? There's an app for this, there's an app for that. But more importantly, they buy an iPhone or an iPad for the future apps, for the new innovations that are still to be designed and delivered for those platforms and products. <clears throat> so here's fundamentally how it works. Once an innovation architect builds, designs, delivers open, comprehensive, specific innovation sockets, it attracts innovation companies, just like the iPhone platform attracts a tremendous amount of ISVs. They come together and they create inventions for that particular city or that particular mega project. Those inventions, in turn, have already made place to land. In other words, there's a lot of business people in the room. You won't necessarily make R&D investments unless you understand what your payback is, and hopefully there'll be low risk. A government in an innovation mega project ensures the projects will be delivered. They provide the right kind of conditions along with their private sector partners, their, their academia and others that are involved to make sure that it is delivered on time, hopefully on time, under budget, hopefully under budget, but more importantly, it does happen more often than not. So when you combine a series of sockets, you actually provide an ecosystem 
for a virtuous ecosystem that is self-sustaining. Additional products come online, people know that there's a market, companies develop around that, they invest, they continue to invest, and you have, again, plug and play. You have an old system, you unplug it, you plug in a new one. The city is designed as a platform Multiple sockets turn into a platform, a platform turns into a layer of innovation where the city actually benefits, benefits economically. So a couple of examples of how it could work, and these are visions that we've actually designed that we believe are germane to this concept, but more importantly are needed in terms of solving the grand challenges that we all think about. So we have a concept called MoveNet, which is all about personal mobility. We have plug and play construction, which is all about modularizing and, and, uh, and, and opening up the capabilities uh, of moving f normally fixed items. And we think about smart aging. When you think about the elderly and you think about the aging trends of the world, those are both big challenges and huge economic opportunities um, for the world. So to wrap up, let's talk about what it is again. An innovation architect partners with government, partners with the traditional partners, but tries to build a city, tries to build a mega project that has the future in mind. It is designed in. That creates a virtuous cycle for companies to build products and to invest in that context. Those products are deployed. Those deployments also cause investment to happen, new intellectual property to be formed, jobs to be created, and potentially even an export economy if done right. So you can have it two ways. We believe you can have the traditional approach, which is great. It creates great places to live, play, work. Or you can actually take the impetus and the economic stimulus of a city, of a mega project, and turn it into something that is far more sustainable, something that will provide benefits for decades to come, something that will provide not just the traditional um, things that people look for in a, in a great place to live and work, um, but something that would actually provide economic stimulus to keep everyone working. Uh, and working towards something new every day. Today, we're working with several governments around the world to try to implement these projects. We'll keep you posted. Thank you.